Hello Tinderwebs. Um, okay, today has been a very emotional day for me, you can probably see it all over my face. Um, I have a really important message for my, uh, my fellow gamers. So this is from games journalist and games streamer and general all-round games geek. Uh, I play games every day. I own uh, so many games consoles. It, so many games um, and so this is this is me speaking as one of you to you uh, the gamer um, and this this is an appeal um, this is an appeal for for you to take a look at at how much money that you spend on games um, and this appeal is, the reason why I'm, I'm making this appeal is um, for your good, for the good of the industry, and for the good of the world as a whole. Now, I know that last one is, you know, mind blown. Um, so, bear with me, <laughs> I will explain. It will hopefully all make sense when I am done with my video. Um, now, I've done the whole Treat Every Day Like Christmas Day initiative um, thing up the top there I will leave in the description um, a link to my original um, 365 Christmases video this is all very interlinked um, because this year is a year of charity for me it's very much a year of giving a year of kindness and love and charity and um, and this this video is inspired by that it's not not necessarily directly connected um, because this video is also very much about the games industry as a whole and what we can do to change some very some very wrong things that are going on in the industry at the moment um, and, and make things better for the industry and for us, the gamer. Um, now, how do I start? Okay, uh, how do I start? Okay. Now, I've been watching um, videos by, there's a channel called Pretty Good Gaming, and I will, again, I will link down in the description for you. And um, now, this the thing, some of the things that they've been discussing on the channel have been things that I have been thinking about for a very long time now, but they've actually, um, you know, really looked into, into the statistics of it and, um, you know, the general facts of it. And really brought it to to more to the forefront um on on my on my youtube subscription uh, discuss a few times now is how games are overpriced uh AAA companies are making way too much money from uh, from pre-orders and from um season passes uh i mean come on how many games you you buy you buy the game for 40 pounds and then uh, or you buy the collector's edition because it comes with uh, some costume for your character to wear in the game and, and and maybe a bonus level, I don't know. And the thing is, you should only really have to pay for a game, just, just a full game, a complete package. Um, and then if a year down the line there is a market for it, if people enjoy the game enough, if people have, enough people have bought the game and are playing the game and going I have played this game three times over I need more content then the creators go hey let's make DLC it shouldn't be a case of while they're making the game they go hey let's make more money off of these stupid people and um make DLC before the game is even out while they're making the main game they also make the DLC and then they release DLC a few months later or you know I there's one Assassin's Creed game where you buy the season pass to get access to all the DLC. Except here's the here's the here's the annoying thing here. Here's the the little annoying thing. Um, the season pass costs however much it costs. Um, except the season pass only with a small amount of things and only one proper DLC, only one extra um, plot, as it were, extra extra section of plot. And this is uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Um, and that one extra plot costs you less if you buy it just as 
you know, if you just buy that that one um, DLC as opposed to buying the season pass. But of course, everybody's bought the season pass because they're expecting to get loads more content, but actually they only get the one more content. So that is a that is a prime example right there. Um, then you've got oh, Dead Rising Four just came out, um, and there is a game where literally I, I don't play Dead Rising; it's not really for me. But Dead Rising Four just came out, and apparently uh, you can play through uh, the entire game. You get to the end, and then it has like a great big to be continued. It's all basically in order to, to get a real ending for the game, you have to buy the DLC, and that is just disgusting um now so so what we need to do as gamers and i know this is difficult because i know you love playing games i love playing games we all love playing games that's why we're gamers um but you need to stop buying that you need to stop buying the season passes. You need to stop buying the collector's editions. You need to stop pre-ordering to get the pre-order bonuses. Um, we all need to, to just... If, if millions of people stopped doing that, then they wouldn't keep taking advantage of us. They wouldn't keep... It just... It wouldn't be the way it is now. Ten years ago, it wasn't like this. And it shouldn't be like this. Um... Buy independent games. There's another thing. If you're going to spend, if you're going to spend your hard-earned money, or job seekers, sadly, if you're unemployed, um, if you are going to spend your money on uh, on games, then spend it on the little games, not the big games. You know, and not the big games. Spend spend it on independent games. Spend it on the little guy, um, because you know that money is going directly to the people that made it. The AAA games, you know millions of pounds every year off of people people that waste their money on these games and you get 20 hours of content and then you know you, you don't play the game anymore maybe or you buy another game that takes up your attention for another 20 hours of content and it's just it's it's not it's just not financially viable for you you could be spending that money on on, on 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 food on rent, on on going on a date with your significant other um heck on other games you know that 20 pounds that you've spent on on the season pass for that game that you should have only had to have bought the one price for the one game but instead you've bought um, a season pass as well, so you've bought an extra £20 season pass on top of that. That extra £20 could have been spent on a complete other game. Um, it makes no sense. It really doesn't. Um, now, I'm going to offer you some alternatives here, because I'm well aware that um, you might want to, to, be, to be playing games as soon as they come out. You know, you really want to be there for the the day it op the day it, it launches you want to be uh, posting your review on youtube or telling your friends how amazing it is um maybe you just want the latest game as it comes out because that's how you roll that's just what that's just what you do um and there are cheaper alternatives than paying the full price for it um there are cheaper alternatives now other than of the obvious being don't buy the collector editions just buy the standard editions um, but there are alternatives, and I'm going to go through those with you now. Okay, first, we have uh, games rental websites. Now, um, there are lots of these in the US, less elsewhere in the world. Um, I personally, I use a service called Boomerang. Uh, Boomerang Games Rental. Again, I will post a link um, in, in the description. And I pay £15 a month uh, to get as many games, uh, rent as many games. So I can put it on a... I can do there's a, there's a there's an extra amount of money that you can pay every month to get the new releases to to have you prioritized over standard members to get the new releases and literally um it has I used to be on that membership because I like having new releases um and I did get new releases as they were released you know the extra money was worth it something like 3 4 extra pounds a month to get brand spanking new releases as they come out now as long as you've got the the spare rental space as long as you're not already renting your maximum amount so if you re if you're renting two games at a time 
and you've already got two games at home, you're not going to get the new release until you've sent back one of the games that you've got at home. So, you know, that's how it works. Um, but it, it, it is... It is. I've been a member of Boomerang for four or five years now. Um, and I have saved myself so much money. I mean, there are games that I'm really glad that I didn't buy at full price because I rent them thinking they're going to be this amazing game and I've been looking forward to this for years. And then I play them and go, what is this rubbish? And then I send it back. And I, I haven't really, I haven't spent a fortune on it. I've spent £15 a month to get as, mu as much use out of those games as I want. You can have unlimited rentals or you can have a set amount of rentals. But this isn't an advertisement for Boomerang. Okay, there are other services as well. Um, you may even have a little local, sometimes you get these little local stores that, that rent out games. Um, I think we've got one of them down in um, Birchington. Uh, so it is, you do, you used to have a lot more of them, but it's less common these days. Um, you can even, uh, on PlayStation, on your PlayStation 4, you can even rent games now. You can rent a game for 24 hours. I don't know how financially viable that is. Um, I don't know if they have new releases. I'm, I'm not sure how it works really, but it's worth looking into if you have a PlayStation 4. Um, you have the uh, PlayStation On Demand services, um, which streams the game directly to your console, and um, you can rent those games uh, so that's another option so games rental i can highly recommend that as a very cheap alternative instead of paying 40 pound a pop 40 pounds every time um you know instead you're paying 10 20 30 pounds a month there are different levels of membership for different prices um which give you new releases old releases different platforms different amounts so you can have you know up to four games at a time i think it is um then the, the next is um, gaming cafes, gaming bars, or gaming lounges. Uh, now, this has become a very popular thing the, the past few years. Um, it's, it's quite common in the US. It's come over to the UK now as well. My local gaming lounge is called Noobs Gaming in Margate. Um, again, I will post links to... There's, there's, there's two, two in London that I know of as well. I'll post links to those. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but I will post links. Um... Now, what it is, is where you, it's like an internet cafe, but with games consoles and games PCs. They encourage you to come along and um, hang out, you know, make friends and socialise, or you can just lurk in the corner if that's what you prefer. Um, but you get access to, you know, these, these places, they buy new games because new games bring in customers. So, um, I mean, Noobs had, it, it had Battlefield 1 as soon as it was released. It had Doom as soon as it, re it was released. You know, you can, you can go there and you can play these epic new games. Heck, let them know in advance that there's a game coming up that you are interested in. If you are someone that goes to this establishment on a regular basis to play their games, you know, you pay your £10 a day, which is how much news charge, I don't know about the ones in London. Um, you pay your £10 a day, unlimited gaming throughout the day. And so, and you're a regular customer that does that. And you say to them, hey, there's a new release coming out next month. I'm really interested in it. Um, can you get this in for me? And if enough people say, you know, if, if five, ten people say that they want this game here, um, then that gaming cafe will say, hey, there's interest there. We will get people coming back if we get that game in. So they will then buy copies of that game to get into their cafe, to get into their bar, to get into their lounge. And then you pay your £10. And some of these games you can get through in, in, in one day. <laughs> you know? So you could be paying £10 um, instead of 40 you know, your £10 membership to this, this gaming place um, instead of 40 um, So there's something to think about. Give it a Google. Uh, find out where your nearest gaming uh, place is, you know, public gaming place. So uh, Google, have a Google for um, gaming cafe, gaming lounge, um, gaming bar, uh, th things, like, things like that. Um, you know, and just and they will have gaming PCs and games consoles, and lots of lots of games to choose from, and it's just so financially viable. You could be saving hundreds of pounds a month, uh, especially in the summer. You know, in the summer or at Christmas when all the the big games come out, and they all come out at the same blooming time. I mean, 
Titanfall 2 and Battlefield 1 at the same time. And they're both produced by EA as well. Like, EA, come on, sort yourselves out. You've released two epic games in the same week, and I want both of them, but I can't afford both of them. You know, but I didn't have to, because I bought Titanfall 2, but I went to the gaming lounge to play Battlefield 1. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because I wanted to play Titanfall 2 at home. Um, but uh, that is actually, interestingly, Titanfall 2 is the only game that I've ever bought um, on release day at full price you know, pre-ordered it and everything. Um, I don't normally pre-order. I don't normally buy full price. I wait until things are on sale, unless it's an indie game. Independent games, I will happily buy at full price because I know the money is going straight to the that made it. Um, so all the stuff on uh, Steam Green and the um, the indie section of the Xbox Marketplace, etc. Um, okay, so we've done gaming lounges, we've done rentals. Um, I'm just going to have a check of my notes and <laughs> make sure that I haven't missed anything. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, okay, so are your options in terms of saving yourself some money? Now, here is my second, here, now we're going to get to the grand scheme of things, the larger, the, for me, more important thing. And that is, um, I'm going to appeal to your sense of goodness now, your sense of, of being a good person um, and I'm going to do this by by saying that that the money that I've just shown you how to save now charity begins at home so by all means use that money that you saved to make sure that you are well fed and well clothed and your rent is paid and so on and so forth but if you have that spare money that 40 pounds that you that you have no longer spent on that release can now be spent to make the world a better place. And I know that I may, I'm, I'm, I hope that I haven't lost you at this point, because I know a lot of people probably have turned off at that point. And, um, but there are ways that you can make the world a better place without spending money even. You don't, you don't have to give that money to charity. You can, charity begins at home, you can spend that money on yourself in a different way, or buy a, buy a present for a friend, or whatever. Um, but, you don't have to donate money to charity. I donate money to charity all the time, even though people tell me I probably shouldn't because I don't have the money to spare, but, you know, that's another thing entirely. Um, that's just me. Everyone is different. Everyone is unique. You may not want to spend money on charity, but you don't have to spend money to make the world a better place. There are so many different ways that you can improve the world without spending your money. Um, now, I'm going to go through those with you now. So, um, first and foremost, the very obvious is uh, when you're when you're done with your games, give them to a charity shop, um, and the charity shop will sell them, and that will make money for the charity shop, and the charity will then spend that money on making the world a better place. Um, secondly, uh, you can game as a fundraiser. Now, I haven't done this myself, but I have given money to people that have done 24-hour gaming streams and stuff like that. And I'm planning on doing it myself because um, I'm passionate about gaming and I'm passionate about fundraising. So let's just, let's combine the two, you know, combine the two and, and make the world a better place. Um, now, there are, there are also, you don't even have to, and, and, and the money from those fundraisers can even go to gaming-based charities. Yes, there are gaming-based charities. Now, I can think of two offhand. There may be more. If there are more, please do post them down in the comments. Encourage people to donate. To, to donate. But to the best of my knowledge, I know about two. Um, one of them is British-based, and that is uh, Special Effects, who are a charity. And I've met the people that, that, that founded this charity and, 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 and run this and they are such wonderful people and what they do is they use the money from special effect to make gaming accessible for disabled people so you've got people that 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 are deaf uh, blind don't have hands i have literally i have seen someone play forza and by the way beat me at it using their eyes i'm serious i'm being perfectly serious here um, I, I played, I played a racing game with someone who had no arms and no legs and was going around in this wheelchair and everything and they were just, they were using their eyes 
to um, the, the software and hardware had been adapted so that they could move, they could, they could accelerate and steer with the use of their eyes. And uh, it just, oh, it's hard to explain. You just, you have to go on the website and, and, and see what I'm talking about. But that's where that money goes. They use the technology like the Kinect, the, um, the PlayStation Move, you know, all, all this technology can be can be altered um, and new technology made as well. New technology available to um, people like us, but um, that is made specially for, uh, for disabled people um, so that they can experience games. Because, I mean, we, we take it for granted. We play games all the time. We're gamers. We love to game. But there are people that have been in horrible accidents or people that have been disabled their entire life. And without the help of special effect, would not be able to play games. Would not be able to experience the kick buttness, the 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 the, the, the racing, the saving the world, the uh, the the slicing and dicing zombies. I don't know. Just there are so many so many different genres. Um, but this charity is well worth. They they do. Uh, you, they do all kinds of fundraisers, including games-related fundraisers. Or you could do something standard. You know, you can do a, a sponsored run, or, or or a picnic, or I don't know. It just there are there are so many different. There's, there's loads of ideas on the website. Um, so many different ways you can fundraise or get involved in another fundraiser that somebody else is making the effort to organise because maybe you're you don't think in that way. You can't organise something yourself, but you would like to get involved. So please go on the special effect website, see how you can get involved. Um, just help make the world a better place for other gamers, for for gamers who are who are less well off than than we are. Um, you know, and and just help bring them that joy. Um, and may, maybe spend that money, that, 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 that spare money that you have um, saved with those, those little tidbits that I've given you. Use that money on a charity like Special Effect or Children in Need or, or you know, any, there are, there are literally, there are hundreds of thousands of charities around the world. There are too many charities. I don't, I can't list them all. That would be, I'm pretty sure that would be impossible. Um, and just, they all need our help. They do. Um, the other charity on the list is there's um, there is a charity. Hold on, it's called Right to Play. Um, right to Play dot org. Um, is that? I think. No, that's not it. Although that is a good charity. I can't remember what the name of the charity is. That's not the one. Um, there is another charity. I will link when I find it. Um, there is another charity. Uh, which actually functions purely on um, on on on, it, on on gaming funders. You know, I mean, obviously they take standard donations and they do other fundraisers, but they primarily um, they encourage people to do gaming streams in aid of charity. And they have this one great big international games um, marathon every year um in aid of uh children in hospitals suffering from uh from diseases um you know conditions that that, that are that are killing them um and that's again it's it's gaming related um and you're helping children and children is a children is you know children are they they are you know such a precious thing that needs to be protected and helped and cared for and um, these children are dying and the your money that you raise from doing this gaming marathon helps to um, to care for these children that that are suffering and um, you know make their last days in this world better um, and maybe maybe help extend their lives you know um, I will post a link when I find that blooming charity I can't remember the name of it um, so there's that but Oh, hello, Poppy. This, this is my dog. My dog, Poppy. Hello, Poppy. You can just... Could... Mummy's talking to the world. Mummy's talking to the world. Don't forget animal charities, she says. Don't forget animal charities. Um, so I have done a lot of crying today because I, I give to charity on a regular basis. I do fundraisers. But I am also a gamer. And it has been, it has been very frustrating for me that... 
I don't buy games at full price because I think they are extortionate and I shouldn't be paying that price um, because I think they're ripping us off as gamers. And on a on a deeper um, on a deeper level in the grand scheme of things, I feel like that money that money should be can be and should be spent on making the world a better place. And I really hope that after watching this video, there's another video of my 365 days of Christmas, um, that you will consider consider this because if if everybody in the world stopped spending money on games and wedding dresses and, and trainers and holidays and, you know, all these luxuries, these big luxuries, um, then, and, and, and tried spending that money on, on making the world a better place or, or just spending some of their time on making the world a better place. If you take just a fraction of your gaming time and convert it into fundraising time. You don't even have, you could just fundraise as a gamer. You know, you can do a gaming session, do what you love, but in aid of something good. Um, then you are making a difference in the world and, and just, because this world needs, it needs us. The world is, is so fragile and so damaged and, oh, I'm holding back the tears here again. Um, Just please, please consider donating some of your time, your old games. Um, don't buy new games. Use some of the alternatives that I told you about to save that extra money and then give that extra money to charity. Do a fundraiser. Share this video. Um, find out more about those charities that I've mentioned. Find your local gaming lounge. And go there and spend your money there instead of on these AAA games that are making millions and millions of pounds off of you and your DLC. Um, and and just if all of us did that, if all of us did this, we would just we would make such a huge dent in there are there are millions and millions of gamers, and if all of us stopped giving in to that desire to buy a game at full price and that desire to buy the did the season pass and the dlc and the collector's edition and um if, if all of us if even if even like a tenth of us took um our gaming time and converted it into fundraising time um we would make such a huge difference in the world and i really really hope that you consider joining me and joining me and you know um but just we, we play these games where we are heroes and and we save the world from evil and you know we we can do it in real life i know it's cheesy but we can we can we can band together and we can do it in real life irl um you know it just we can be real superheroes you know, each and every one of us can be real superheroes. Individually and together, we can make a difference in the world. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to go because I'm, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Please, please consider it. Um, keep gaming, but just just change the way you think about how you game the amount of money you spend on gaming and what you can do with your gaming to make the world a better place thank you for watching <laughs> i'm just going to go and quietly fall apart on my own um <laughs> uh, please like and comment and subscribe and share 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 <laughs> oh, and Merry Christmas, because treat every day like Christmas Day. See? It says out there. <laughs> um, I should have had my Christmas hat on for really, but um, nah, I didn't think of it. But Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas every day of the year. Um, thank you all so much for, for watching. Take care of yourself.